Hello and welcome to iNerdius and the Writer's Tears playlist. For this particular video, I want to talk about my first short story sale, which seems kind of an odd thing to talk about in a playlist called Writer's Tears, but you'll understand in a minute. So my first short story sale was to Lawrence Watt Evans for inclusion in this paperback anthology, New York, which was essentially stories set in New York City in the future. And in order to submit a story, you had to have some sort of connection to New York City. And my connection essentially came in three parts, basically. My first visit to New York City was during an eight hour layover at Kennedy Airport, in which I decided to go ahead and take a bus into Manhattan because I had never been there before and was fascinated by New York City, mainly through the movies of Woody Allen. I was a huge Woody Allen fan at that point, loved his movies, loved the way he portrayed New York City, and I wanted to see it for myself. So that first trip took the bus into Manhattan. I only knew about two or three places that I felt like I could go check out, one of them being the Russian Tea Room, which I thought, well, I'll just go there and have some tea. How expensive can that be? Well, turns out you can't just go to the Russian Tea Room and have some tea, or you couldn't back then. Uh, interestingly, the lady who was working the front door also happened to be from Gainesville, Florida, which is where I was living at the time because I was going to or had gone to the University of Florida and was still living in Gainesville at that time. So during that trip, I wandered around, checked out some places. I think I tried a couple of classic New York dishes like some pizza, maybe a sandwich somewhere. I don't remember a whole lot about that particular trip because I only had a few hours to spend. And so I had to hightail it back to the bus depot and get back to the airport in order to make my flight back home. The next trip, as I recall it anyway, was an abortive attempt to move to New York. I had applied to and gotten accepted by a small college on Staten Island called Wagner College and actually moved there, taking the Greyhound bus directly from the World Science Fiction Convention in New Orleans, where I had essentially brought everything I owned that I was taking with me that I hadn't put into storage and stored in my friend's car while we hung out at the convention without rooms, I might add. I don't know how we managed, but we spent the entire Worldcon in New Orleans without a room. And so my friends who drove me to the convention drove me to the bus stop, and I took the bus to Manhattan from New Orleans, a 40 hour bus ride. And when I got to Wagner College, they told me that I did not get enough financial aid in order to pay for housing in my dorm, where I was rooming with a friend of mine from high school. And so, at least as I understood it, I was racking up debt by staying there. And I decided to go ahead and pull the plug on that. And my friend Charles Pinion picked me up, took me to the bus station, and I took the bus back down to Gainesville from Manhattan. So that didn't work out very well, that trip. The next time I was in New York, it was with a group of friends who were driving up to Connecticut to stay at the one friend's family's house. I had a friend who was going to be in Manhattan to see Shakespeare in the park. And the idea was that my friends dropped me off in Manhattan, and I would meet up with that friend at Shakespeare in the Park, and I'd crash at his hotel room. Well, it turned out that that night was raining, and Shakespeare in the Park was canceled. When I say raining, it was really a huge downpour. So Shakespeare in the Park was canceled. I never connected with my friend. Back then, you didn't have cell phones, so I couldn't text him or call him. I actually didn't know which hotel he was staying at, or he told me and I'd forgotten or something. I don't really remember. And I spent that evening wandering around New York, staying out of the rain. And as it says here, um, 
in the afterword to my story. So the story is only four pages long. It's called Rise and Fall. And the afterword to the story says, his associations with New York City include an aborted attempt to move there and an overnight stay in Times Square with practically no money and nowhere else to go. Sort of an after hours experience. He was followed and chased, spat on, accosted by an AA meeting, run off the sidewalk by two police cars, rained on, and philosophized at by an actor and his dog. He finally spent what little money he had on a ticket to an all-night movie house that was showing Willow, the movie Willow, and spent the rest of the night there. And that's all true. That's exactly what happened. I slept in the theater during multiple showings of the movie Willow with my backpack like this and trying to ignore all of the weird squishing sounds that I heard around me and managed to meet my friends at the appointed corner the next day. They took me up to Connecticut with them and I spent the rest of that trip with them in Connecticut. So that association to New York led to me being invited to this anthology. The other thing that led to me being invited to this anthology was my fanzine, Science Fiction Randomly, which I talked about in an earlier video, which Lawrence Watt Evans was one of the people we sent copies of that to, and he liked my writing enough to invite me to submit to this anthology. And I sent him a total of five stories. He rejected all of them except the last one, which I sent just before the deadline. And so my first sale actually happened in 1990 to, to this paperback anthology. Some of the other authors in this anthology include Piers Anthony, who wrote a story called Cloister, which is set in the Cloisters in Manhattan, which I've been to, very nice, really pretty area. Susan Schwartz, Janet Asimov, Lawrence Wood Evans, of course, Mike Resnick, Martha Sukup, Christine Catherine Rush, Michael Stackpole, John Shirley. It's a good book to be part of, I think. Now, the reason this is part of Writer's Tears is that when this book was reviewed, and I don't remember which review it was or where it was, I want to say it was in either the Science Fiction Chronicle or Locus, the review singled out my story as being embarrassingly bad. Now, this wasn't my first review ever. I had stories that were published in fanzines reviewed and all getting really glowing reviews. So I'm not saying that this was my first review ever, but this was the first review of something I had sold professionally. And for it to be called embarrassingly bad, yeah, it was a disappointment, but quite honestly, it didn't really affect me as much as I thought it would. I wasn't expecting, A, a bad review of my story in particular. I mean, I sold the story, so obviously somebody liked it, and other people have told me they like it as well. So I don't think it's necessarily a terrible story, but you would think that your first professional sale, that a negative review would be a bit devastating. Weirdly, it didn't have that effect on me. I was riding high on the fact that I saw this paperback in the bookstore and picked it up off the shelf, looked at the table of contents, and saw my name. And I have to say, that as somebody who strove to become a professional writer, or at least to sell fiction professionally and have it published as widely as possible, so as many people as possible could read it, that is something that I think overrides, at least for me, any kind of negative review I might get. And so I... I kind of attribute it to this idea that I've always had, which was at least I'm at least I'm in the game, you know, at least I'm out there doing it. I felt that way all the time when I was writing and I was submitting stories and I knew I was I was in the game. I was out there trying and making some headway aside from this story, I sold another story, a horror story, to a small press that same year. And I was feeling pretty good about my writing in general. And I was enjoying 
writing at the Cafe, Cafe Espresso in Gainesville, Florida, which is where I did most of my writing at that time. And I really enjoyed doing it. I was actually having fun writing. And those two things really matter a lot, I think. This feeling of being in the game, that you're doing it. I think that's a huge thing that gets overlooked when people think about what success means. For me, that was a big, that was a big deal. Getting published professionally in a paperback anthology, being in a book with names that I had been reading since middle school was huge. And so it didn't really bother me that I had that negative review. And over the years, I've had good reviews. I've had, I've had negative reviews. I've been involved in projects that didn't come to fruition. Those are the ones that hurt the most, to be honest with you. Um, getting something done and having it out there, to me, is really all that matters. Positive reviews, accolades, those kinds of things, sure, they're great. But it's all secondary, really, to finishing something having somebody decide to publish it, or even these days, publishing it yourself and having people read it or watch it or whatever. To me, that's what matters. That and enjoying what you're doing. And as long as I enjoy writing, I will continue doing it and trying to find ways to get it out there so people can read it. So there you have it. That is my Writer's Tears video on my very first story, which was called Rise and Fall only four pages long in the anthology New York by Lawrence Watt Evans. Thank you very much.